this swing gym with X treats, and today I'm doing my weekend review. The first stock I'm looking at is AMC because it's forming a very nice and big wedge pattern on the daily time frame, which is the exact same pattern it formed in February right before its large rally from $9 all the way to $71. So I'm expecting you know, a similar move and breakout. I don't expect the same percent gains, but I do expect a nice rally from $40 to at least this $80 level if we do break out with strong volume. I'm looking for a breakout volume of around 250 to 300 million shares and a close above this 46.51 level. Other resistance levels would be this 52.78 and additional support would be 37.23 and 2898, which is lines up pretty closely with this 200 SMA. Next is CTRN. I'm bullish on this stock because of the sector it's in, apparel stores. I think we'll see the sector rally into the end of the month. We had a nice breakout and back test of this 9024 level, which is very good resistance. So we also see the 8 SMA and the month 8 anchored view up coming towards that level. So I do think we'll see a bounce and rally to the 104. Uh, 47 level, which is the resistance level here. Additional support would be 85.97 and 78.61. However, if we look at CTRN versus SPY, we could see that above 0.2 is the resistance here, and we should see a nice and strong rally as we've been really stuck under this level with really no traction since the May June time frame. Additionally, we see CTRN have very strong seasonality into the end of the month and into December. Um, the apparel names as a whole usually have more relative strength in November, not as much as December. But the fact that CTRN is very bullish in both those months is an added benefit. Next is DHI. Uh, the reason why I like DHI so much is because we saw the bull flag breakout, which I called out two months ago. We finally hit our target at 104.41. As a long-term name, I think this is very bullish. But in the shorter term, I am expecting a pullback. We did hit the resistance, and we have a very bearish candle here on the daily time frame. In addition, uh, if we look back at the past four bull flags, we see that once we see a breakout, consolidation usually follows. So the longer the bull flag, the longer the consolidation. So we could see this pattern over and over again. So that's why I think for the fifth time around, it most likely will occur. And in addition to that, if we do look at the sector DHI is in, which is the home builder section, sector, sorry, the home builder sector, we do see that on a relative basis, it is hitting very strong resistance here. Um, XHB versus SPY is the 0.18 level. As you can see, it also lines up with the Fibonacci from the recent local high to the recent local low. So the fact that we would see some sort of pullback or consolidation within the sector gives it a more likely chance that DHI will see the same thing. I don't think we break out of this consolidation into the you know end of December, early January of 2022. The next stock I'm going to be looking at is IWM. The reason why is because it's back testing a very important level. This was the old resistance level of the consolidation that we saw that was, you know, started in February and broke out in November. So we can get a back, uh, back test and bounce from this level. That's going to be very bullish for your smaller cap and mid cap stocks. If we don't see that bounce, 229 is your first support and your second level is 224. Again, I'm going to say it over and over in this video. November, the end of November, very seasonally bullish time period for the markets. So the odds are we do see a bounce here. This would be an ETF I'm watching very, very closely, uh, for especially if you're a small cap or momentum-based trader. This is a very important chart. Next is Solar Edge Technologies. We saw a nice inverse head and shoulders here, and we saw a nice uh, breakout of the neckline consolidation, gap and go, another consolidation. As you could see, the red moving average, which is the 20 SMA, is starting to meet price, and the 8 SMA is starting to flatten out. In addition to that, we see that the month-to-date anchored view up is acting as support now, which was former resistance. What I have here is LO. LR, line of least resistance. That means that once a certain price level is broken, it's a lot easier for that stock to travel in the direction. So once 372 is break, broken, the line of least resistance is now upwards, and it's much easier for solar edge technologies to travel in a bullish path. I think 400 will be the resistance level that most likely 
stops the rally. But if we do zoom out a little bit, 422 is the secondary FIB level. What I would like to add here is that this is a very good hedge for oil names. If we quickly look at TAN, which is the, the solar ETF, we could see that once this rally really started picking off, we had a nice 25% gain. We could see that XOP started consolidating. It started consolidating during that time. It's been flat pretty since, and now we started to see a breakdown. I think longer term, XOP will be bullish and will rally, but for the intermediate term, I think we will need to see some sort of consolidation. It did hit a very key uh, short-term level here at 99.26, so a bounce going into Monday or Tuesday would not surprise me. But a gap and gap and go below the 50 SMA is not usually a bullish sign for the short short term. Quickly to go back to TAN though, once we break this trend line, a rally to 102 is what I expect. So that should line up with a break of 372 for Solar Edge and a rally to 400. Next is Silvergate Capital SI. This is a, a Bitcoin related name. And as we could see, we formed a wedge pattern here and broke out. So I'm looking for a nice range expansion continuation pattern to get us to 250. Essentially what that is, is these two green arrows highlight that very well. You get a nice bullish candle with a little bit of increased volume breaking a key resistance level. And you see continued momentum. That's exactly what we want to see. We want to see a nice, you know, 20 to 40% rally concentrated between three to five days. So that's the kind of momentum I'm looking here for Silvergate Capital. And I want to see that bullish momentum occur as soon as possible. We could see for this stock that it does not usually wait to rally. Its follow through occurs right away. So we want to see that same pattern continue. In addition, if we go back towards this October and to February rally, we see that every time the 20 SMA touches, we do see a nice bounce. And that's the key thing you want to see for these high momentum names. You want to see consolidation while the 10 to 20 SMA catches up with price. The price action will tap those SMAs and then you see a strong bounce, which is exactly what we see here. We also have an added benefit of, again, a nice wedge pattern. So I'm very bullish on Silvergate Capital. Next is SPY. Um, I do think we will kind of pull back probably to 467 as we usually do see the VIX pop right after options expiration. Not always, but on average, we do see a pop. So I'm looking for a short term pullback, but this is something I would definitely would not short um, just because of how bullish, you know, Apple has been. Nice failed inverse head and shoulders rally. Same with Microsoft. We had a nice gap and go, and it's been very bullish. So as long as these names continue to be very strong relative strength names, it's going to be very hard to see any sort of weakness for SPY. So in a short term, one or two days, you might see a mini pullback. But I do expect us to break out of this sort of range pattern here and rally to at least 475. Next is Tal Education. We could see that it had formed a sort of a nice triangle pattern here. We had a brief breakdown of the support uh, to 381, but then we started to rally upwards and we broke out Friday of this trend line pattern. I've been seeing a lot of relative strength coming into the education and training services sector over the past three days. And on Friday, there was a lot of 4% bullish moves for the sector. So we, again, we saw a lot of stocks making new relative lows. Uh, we did see TAL education breaking out here. So it's a very bullish sign. Resistance here would be 577 and this other red box here at 958. For a stock like TAL education, similar to Silvergate, we want to see that momentum occur right away. We want to see that range expansion have immediate follow through. This is not a stock I want to consolidate for three days and then rally again. So if I was trading the stock, I would be looking to sell some of my positions at 582. And now leave the rest for runners. I have to be 50, 60%. Hope the rest break from this level and rally to the 958 level. I would definitely be taking almost all my gains after four days because it's a very momentum heavy stock. And in the short term, relative from March, it has dropped to 95%. So it's not something I want to hold and you know maybe it continues to go down to $2. I want this to be more of a shorter term trade that would be definitely out by Friday. Next is TSM. 
Um, very tight range here we saw from March to December, and we're finally starting to break out here with volume. We're making higher lows on the daily time frame, and we're getting nice bullish patterns here, nice bull flag breakout, again, with that bullish volume. So what I'm looking for is continuation going into Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and really looking for continued high volume and consistently staying above this 123 resistance level. I think if we do that, it's a pretty easy ride to this 134 resistance level. Additional support would be 119.27, and below that would be 108.03. I would like to add that semiconductors has been a super strong sector, definitely top five sector um, from the beginning of 2021. So that gives a lot of um, bullish momentum towards TSM. If we do look at TSM versus SMH, on a relative basis, it did hit this key support level and started bouncing back. So we could see continued uh, a continued bounce here all the way to 46. That would be very bullish for the stock as well. Finally, we have gold versus the U.S. dollar. We did kind of get a range expansion towards the downside. So if we retest this green box, which is, you know, 1838, which lines up with the resistance here at 1832 and this green trend line. Trend line was resistance, we broke out. So a back test and bounce is what I'm looking for. Um, additional resistance levels would be 1887, 1910, and 1957. Support would be 1798, 1765, and 1685. I think gold has a lot going for it now with a nice inverse head and shoulders pattern that's bottoming on the daily. If we quickly look at gold versus commodities we could see that it did back test this resistance level and bounced we saw the same thing happen back in 2017 old resistance becomes new support so i'm expecting that same pattern to continue here we've also saw it be a very weak uh sector or asset class from august to uh november really while almost every single commodity besides silver was rallying very strong so we kind of have uh, you sort of a bounce back rally on a relative strength basis for gold i think that's very much likely to occur also if we do see the dollar weakening at any time it will it will give added benefit towards the gold rally again gold and the dollar can rally at the same time but it's much easier for gold to rally when the dollar cools off and i do think most of the dollar's gains or relative strength has not because other currencies like Turkey's currency and the euro have been weaker. So I do think we will probably pull back because once we hit this resistance level here at 25.87 to some sort of level of 25.52 and 25.42, which should help XAU uh, get some nice relative strength. I also think that because of the options expiration, uh, this asset class was pinned and wasn't really allowed to rally. So we do see a nice rally starting after this op options expiration. We can assume that it will probably rally towards the end of December, which is also a very seasonally bullish month for the asset class as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. hope you guys learned something today, and I hope you guys have a great trading week.